welcome to Loving the Scriptures. I'm your host, your friend, Joshua Odunlade, and together we'll be exploring God's Word to find insights, learn from Him, and to fall more deeply in love with Him today. Let's begin. Hello and welcome back to the Loving the Scriptures podcast. I'm so happy to have you here again with with me after quite a break. And, you know, just kind of speaking about the break that we had. Sometimes we, we think that because we've been away for so long, like we think that because we've been away from our Bibles, from our prayer for so long that it's not possible for us to get back like we can't possibly expect god to accept us back now well that's a deception from the devil for instance here we've been we've been away unavoidably away for about three days or thereabout now but god is ready to accept you whenever you are ready to come back to him so i want to encourage you if you for a while you've not read your bible if for a while you've not prayed like i know that you understand what i mean by praying if for a while you know that you have not actually prayed you've not actually read your scriptures or studied it please it's not too late and it's not too early just turn back to god today just tell him god i i'm sorry i've been away for so long but I want you to come to come and fill me up and to come and give me a purpose and to come and help me to connect with you once more. So just just go back to him today and and just ask him to come into your life again. It's never it's never too late, it's never too early. We are picking up our study again today. You can pick up your study too. You can you can pick up your prayer life again too. You can pick up your pick up your word life too so don't let don't let any devil don't let any demon tell you that you can't okay so that said let's start by praying and committing our episode today into god's hands as we study his word lord we say thank you we glorify your name we adore your name we are grateful for the love for the care for the ability that you have given unto us to always come here before your presence lord we are grateful because every time we come to your presence whether we know it or not we know that we are changed every time we come to your presence whether we feel it or not we know that something has happened to us and something changes in our lives so lord for that we are grateful and we are thankful we say let your name be glorified in the name of jesus if there is any sin whatsoever that will hinder our prayers we ask that you'd please forgive us and that you'd cleanse us because that's what your word says your word says that if we confess our sins you are faithful and just to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness so lord we confess our sins today in your presence and we say that you please forgive us and you please cleanse us in the name of jesus lord we ask that in our lives that you would give us the ability to be consistent with you lord to be consistent with studying your word with praying with fellowshipping with you oh lord we say thank you for your answer to our prayers lord in jesus name we have prayed amen so in our previous episode we learned from the book of john chapter 17 and what we did there was to read the entirety of john chapter 17 but in this episode today we will just be discussing very briefly the first five verses and in my bible i'm using a kjv ad copy bible today in my bible it is titled jesus prays for himself like that specific portion from verse one to five is titled jesus prays for himself and do you know what i realized while reading this text because over the past few days that we've been away um i've been looking at the text and i've been looking at it again and again and again and i've just i just realized one of those days that wow we have access to what jesus was praying 
like this is one of the prayers that we know that jesus prayed with his disciples you know all of those times that jesus would go and pray alone in the in the wilderness or on the mountain we did not know what he was praying or what he was saying but here we have access to the longest prayer i believe that he gave in the gospels wow isn't it amazing so i i feel like it's something that we must study and we must look at holistically and and really learn from it because it it will give us a model after which we must pattern our prayer before we go there um i'm led to matthew the, the lord's prayer in matthew i just want us to read that very quickly together the lord's prayer in matthew is in matthew chapter 6 i believe if i'm not wrong matthew chapter 6 from verse 5 so i would be reading that and i just want you to listen it says that and when you pray don't pray like the hypocrites do for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily i say unto you they have their reward in full but thou when thou prayest enter thy closet and when thou hast shut thy closet pray to thy father which sees in secret and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly but when ye pray do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do for they think that by their much speaking they will be heard be not like them therefore for your father knows the things that you need even before you ask him after this manner pray ye our father which art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptations but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever amen now i want you to note some things there in this prayer jesus said that they should not be like the eden that use vain repetitions did you notice that in the text in john chapter 17 jesus did not use vain repetitions like he may have repeated some things in different ways but he did not like we don't have the record that jesus said let, let me read this for instance that jesus said father the hour has come 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 we do it we do it or that he said glorify thy son jesus glorify thy son god glorify thy son god glorify thy son god glorify thy son god glorify thy son but jesus jesus spoke to god like he was speaking to a person like he was speaking to his father how would your father feel if you come to him and say daddy i want biscuit i want biscuit i want biscuit i want biscuit or daddy i need money i need money i need money i need money like i hope you get the point so we we'll just read from verse 1 to 5 and then i'll make the major highlight i have to make and I will leave you to meditate on the scripture. John chapter 17 verse 1 to 5 This word spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son may glorify thee, as thou hast glorified him over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on earth, I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. With the glory which i had with thee before the world was with the glory that jesus had 
before the world even existed. You know, there's a part of the Bible that says that Jesus was the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world. Okay, so before we deviate into something else, let's let's stick with the verses. Now, what you notice is that Jesus was speaking to his father and he did not use very repetitions. He did not speak so that other people would hear him he was actually speaking to his father but thank god i am grateful to god that we have this prayer of jesus recorded because it shows us how jesus prayed jesus spoke these things to the father like he was speaking to a person and that is the first biggest thing for me do i speak to god like i'm speaking to a person like how do i speak to god and then what I really want to highlight in today's episode is the fact that Jesus defined what eternal life is. Jesus said that this is the eternal life. Remember John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have everlasting life. Then verse 17 says that for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Now we have that testament, we have that testimony of Jesus that Jesus came into the world to give us eternal life and here as Jesus was going he defined what eternal life is. He said that this is life eternal that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent that is in verse 3 of John chapter 17 that means that eternal life is really not yes there is that aspect of eternal life where we live forever with God but that is not all there is to eternal life the real eternal life that Jesus came to give us is that we may know God so that means that we have even started experiencing that eternity of life even here on earth now let me let me clarify that what i mean is that we have started experiencing that eternal life according to what god jesus said here that it is that we know god that is eternal life but you see there's no way that we can know god and know jesus and still be comfortable walking the walks of death the bible says that when you were in the world you gave your members that means you gave your body you gave your hands your feet your legs your eyes you gave your everything to the devil to the works of death to use so you made your body a perpetrator in all the works of death but now that you are saved you must also give your body to the works of righteousness to give to use that is a paraphrase of that particular part of the scripture so what am i trying to say i am trying to make a balance yes jesus came to give us eternal life and yes we experience that eternal life because eternal life is that we may know god and the one that he has sent jesus christ however we cannot say that we know god and walk the works of death it's just like an illustration that a friend gave in church yesterday he said four people got appointment letters into companies and of these four people the first one i am just going to shorten the illustration the first one decided that it was an engineering company so the first one decided that it would keep using the overall of the former company that i was working at the second one decided that it was not even going to wear any overall at all it was just going to to wear his normal clothes The third one decided that he was going to wear the overall of the former company inside and wear the overall of the new company on the outside. And then the fourth one decided that, okay, I'm working in this new company, I have to abide by their rules and regulations, so I will wear what they give me to wear, I will do what they ask me to do. Now, the illustration is that when we were saved from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of his dear son, Jesus Christ, we were we were told to put off the old man that means to put off the former overall and to put on the new man we are not supposed to wear the old man and say that we are still in christ or that we have eternal life no it doesn't happen it doesn't work that way 
we have eternal life because we know God, yes. However, if we commit ourselves to the devil and to his works to use, well, the Bible says that let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he falls. So we must understand that when we come into the kingdom of God, like the fourth man, we must put off the former wear that we wore. We must put off idolatry, put off all the sins that we used to commit and put on the new man the life of jesus the life of christ that he has given unto us so let me ask you today jesus has come to give us eternal life and i think we are still going to study this one to five in the next episode because there's one more thing i want to pick up from there but i want to ask you today jesus has come to give us eternal life you have that eternal life when you know Jesus and when you know the Father. But let me ask you, are you living according to the way that Christ is asking us to live? Am I living according to the way that Christ is asking me to live? Or am I doing whatever it is that I want? And do you know that this life of Christ cannot be lived in the flesh, cannot be lived in our strength. We have to have the strength of God in us and with us to live this life of Christ. So question, are you living according to the life of Christ or are you living according to how you want to live? This is eternal life that they may know you the only true God and the one that you have sent Jesus Christ. You cannot say you know God, you cannot say you know Jesus and willfully, intentionally and consistently without remorse disobey him and continue to live in sin. No, it doesn't happen that way. So I want us to examine ourselves today. Where do we stand? Do we stand with God? Or do we stand with sin and with the devil? Let's pray. Father, we say thank you for your word today. Because your word has challenged us. Your word has brought us to a point where we have to examine ourselves and to think. Are we are we still in the faith? Are we, are we here with you? And to to pray and to dedicate our lives and say god i will stay here with you all the days of my life lord i pray that the sincerity and the ability to be able to do this thing that you would grant it unto us in the name of jesus help us jesus thank you for having said our prayers in jesus name we have prayed amen i believe you have been blessed by this episode of the podcast Please follow us on this platform or on wherever you get your podcast. Also, please share with your friends and family so that they can be blessed by it too. Till we meet again, keep seeking, keep searching, keep meditating on God's word and keep on loving your scriptures and keep on loving God. God bless you.